Hello there, the YouTube. My name is Rob and I'm here today to talk to you about what on earth happened to Woodstock 50, the world's best music festival that wasn't. By the way, I make a lot of videos about music and music festivals, so if you like this video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more content like this. Now, Woodstock has had a complicated past. The original festival in 1969 was a complete shambles. <laughs> It was under-organised, over-attended, and terrible weather delayed the entire festival by about 12 hours. It was mental. And yet it stands as a testament to how much people want to have a good time, as it now stands as one of the greatest music festivals ever. Although the landowner refused to have the festival on his land the following year, since then there have been attempts to revive the festival, celebrating milestones within the Woodstock history. Woodstock 94 this festival was to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Woodstock Festival, and it hosted bands like Cypress Hill, Nine Inch Nails, and Metallica. This festival ended up being very much like the original, under-organised and over-attended, with thousands of attendees walking just straight in with no ticket and banned items going over the basic chain-link fence that was surrounding the arena. But hey, that was the first time they tried to revive it, they learned some lessons, next time it was going to be great. And next time was Woodstock 99, celebrating the 30th anniversary of Woodstock. This festival featured Red Hot Chili Peppers and Korn. Sadly, this festival started off badly, taking place during a heat wave and on an old airstrip, so it didn't even have any trees or anything offering shade. However, things got much, much worse on Sunday night as festival goers started to take songs a bit too literally. The violence, mayhem and destruction started during Limp Bizkit's song Break Stuff. And while Red Hot Chili Peppers had a great idea of honouring Jimi Hendrix and his set at Woodstock, their cover version of his song Fire just inspired people to set a lot of fires. Reports of physical and sexual assault on that Sunday night were very common, and the whole festival is kind of remembered now as a massive f up. Woodstock 50 then was going to revitalise the Woodstock name, and they were going to put on the best music festival of the last 50 years. Michael Lang was the co-producer of the festival, and he has a bit of a history with Woodstock, being the co-creator of every Woodstock festival, including the original one back in 1969. If anybody was going to get Woodstock 50 up and running, it was this guy. So now let's look into the history of Woodstock 50, and how it went from a fantastic, incredible idea to absolutely nothing in just a few months. So, Woodstock 50 was going to be held this weekend on the 50th anniversary of Woodstock between the 16th and the 18th of August 2019. It was going to host such bands as The Killers, Miley Cyrus, and a bunch of other bands who originally played Woodstock, such as Santana and David Crosby. Now, the issues with Woodstock 50 started early on in 2019 and snowballed until the entire festival just became a farce and incredibly entertaining for just how wrong literally everything went. Tickets for Woodstock 50 were initially going to go on sale April 22nd, 2019. However, that day came and went and no tickets went on sale. On April 29th, 2019, the original investors, the Densu Aegis Network, announced that they were no longer funding the festival and it was therefore cancelled. This was due to the organisers of the festival originally promising 150,000 attendees to the festival. However, sometime in April they backtracked on that and brought that number down to 75,000 because they needed to make space for campers. Now, the organisers then disputed what Densu said, said that they were looking for a legal remedy to the situation and confirmed that the festival was still going ahead as planned. The festival was originally going to take place on the Watkins Glen International Racetrack. However, on June 10th, the racetrack announced that the festival was not going to be held there, and this was because the organisers had missed a payment of $150,000. The organisers next tried to get a permit to have the festival at the Vernon Downs racetrack, but this was denied on July 9th. Next, the organisers tried to get the festival to take place at the Merryweather Post Pavilion venue in Maryland. As this venue was considerably smaller, the festival had to then share its space with a voter registration fundraiser and a climate change non-profit organisation. Also, instead of the original $400 three-day passes to the festival, it was to become a free event, much like the original Woodstock. Also, as the Smashing Pumpkins were also playing a gig there that weekend, Woodstock 50 had to compress itself from a three-day festival to a one-day festival. Now, the original lineup of artists were booked through Densu, so when Densu pulled out of the festival, all of those artists were released from those contracts. 
However, the artist had been paid in full by Dentsu, so Woodstock 50 sent a letter to every artist confirming the change of date and venue of the festival, and basically asking if they could still perform the festival if it was possible. However, most of the artists did drop out for various reasons. Sadly, despite all of these attempts to keep Woodstock 50 going, on the 31st of July it was officially announced by the organisers that Woodstock 50 was cancelled. The organisers released an announcement stating, Unforeseen setbacks made it impossible to put on a festival we imagined with the great lineup we had booked. That seems like a reasonable reaction. A brief apology stating that sadly a one day event at a very small venue with very few of the artists they originally booked was not the amazing festival they had planned. Lang however blamed the original investors Dentsu and stated that he was still considering legal action against them. He also stated that he still intends to put on a smaller event at the Merryweather Post Pavilion venue later in the year, but that he wasn't sure if it was going to have the Woodstock name attached to it. Considering that that would take place not on the same date, not in the same location, and having nothing to do with Woodstock, yeah that makes sense. So what can we learn from this? Maybe we can learn that putting on a festival isn't that easy. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of investment, and a lot of passion. Lang definitely had the passion. He did everything he could to try and put on that festival. However, in the end, the festival he was able to kind of put on just was nowhere near what they could have been. I have to say that this whole thing seems vaguely familiar, although even this was less of a dumpster fire than that event. Plus, this event got cancelled before it took place, which is always a bonus. It also should remind us of just what a miracle Woodstock actually was. Even with the underplanning, the overattendance, the terrible weather, Woodstock 1969 took place and is remembered now as one of the greatest music festivals ever. And maybe it should be left like that. Maybe it should be left as this fantastic moment in history, because every time we try and recreate the magic of Woodstock, it completely goes to shit. And that is my brief look into Woodstock 50. I've kind of cut some stuff out, I've tried to keep it as short and entertaining as possible. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, if you have please do click like and subscribe for more content like this. Be sure to follow me on the social medias at OverEdgeKid, buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi if you want, that would be fantastic. My name is Rob and I will see you in another video very soon.